Oh. Hey everybody, it's me, Tiger Yote. Um, let's see, former co-host of Push to Talk. Um, I'm not really sure what else to say. Ah. <clears throat> well, welcome to my Coco stream. Let's see here. Show me the editor. Thank you. All right, so uh, a little bit of background. Um, the Tandy Color computer was one of the also-ran computers of the early '80s. It was a uh, it was put up by Tandy um, through Radio Shack mostly. Um, well, Radio Shack exclusively. Um, the reason it was called the Color Computer is because the original TRS-80, um, I should have gotten a picture of this for the stream, the original TRS-80 uh, was like a gray box with a built-in cathode ray tube and an 8-inch floppy drive, black and white, only had semi-graphics mode, more in line with a Commodore PET uh, than like a Commodore 64 or a VIC-20. Uh, so when the Tandy Color Computer came out, it was a microcomputer for the home that you hooked up to your television set and it did color right out of the box. Not good color, mind. Uh, you had your choice of two eye bleed palettes and one high contrast palette, which I've kind of nicknamed the Hollywood palette in retrospect because it's black, white, orange, and teal. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Diva Panda. Uh, I'm... I'm trying. It's my first time doing this, and I'm feeling a bit awkward, but we'll see how it all goes. So I thought I'd do a little warm-up. Um, I actually have two different emulators that I'm running right now. Um, just to sort of give you an idea of what's available and what you can do. Oh, this thing. So I have to run two different emulators for this, because... Um, Yes, I am running an, on an emulation. Um, the, the color computer came in several different models over the course of its life. It started out as a, as a 4K silver box with chiclet keys uh, and eventually became a full-on 64K computer with a proper keyboard. That was the one I had. Um, but the internals remained more or less the same uh, with the same graphics modes, the same general limitations um, but one thing that one thing the coco could do that put it pretty high above other computers at the time was that you could actually access graphics commands from basic and that sounds strange but like on a color on a color computer you could just type a few commands and draw a circle on the screen and fill it with color uh, you couldn't do this, for example, on a VIC-20 or even a Commodore 64. And like we think of the Commodore 64 now as being like one of the powerhouse graphics machines back in the day. But in order to do any of that, you basically needed to poke memory and do it in assembly because BASIC had no commands to handle that whatsoever. So the color computer had that going for it at least. Um, fortunately, it had a four. It was four colors, so what could you do? So I'm gonna get this started. All right, I thought I'd start off tonight with <clears throat> Starblaze. No, not Starblacks. So we are right emulating all of this stuff from disk. Disk. I'm gonna be tripping over my whole my tongue this whole time. So Starblaze uh, is, well you'll see. Um, but this will also serve as kind of the acid test for my sound setup. So, uh, warning ahead of time, when the aliens invade, there's going to be a siren. I think I've got the sound levels worked out, but we're gonna find out together. So yeah, this is one of the three, one of the three palettes. This is primaries plus green. Um, this one can, can look nice. This game is, looks pretty much okay. So we're going to start off Starblaze. I'm going to hit level 8. So what Starblaze is, it's basically a combination of 
Defender and Star Raiders. Oh, I meant to hit map there. Oops. Okay, clear sector. Good, 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 good. Okay. But yeah, for like, this is one of the cartridge games from, from Radio Shack, and for a cartridge game, it looks pretty good. Um, let's see. So, F's are your fuel depots, R's are your repair bays. Uh, you have fuel, torpedoes, shield, and I think the R is for your radar. I'm not sure if you can actually lose radar. I've, if you can, I've forgotten how. But uh, red sectors have lots of aliens. Yellow sectors have some aliens. Blue sectors are good. They're nice and clean. Um, but here we go. When the warp stops, there will be noise. Oh boy, here we go. Ah! Oh, you bastards. I was good at this game when I was a kid. Alright. Alright, come here. Okay! So it's time to talk about some quirks with emulating the color computer. Um, the color computer had a really unique joystick. I think maybe the Apple II had something similar. But essentially it was two potentiometers with a ball rolling along them. And it was essentially true analog. We're talking a stick with absolute positioning on a computer from the 80s. It was also crap. And it's really difficult to emulate. So one of the reasons I'm using XROAR for the Coco 2 stuff uh, is because VCC, the Coco emulator I'm going to be using for Thelda in a little bit, um, VCC has very bad joystick emulation. It doesn't do the diagonals, basically. Oh, and that little explosion tells me that I waited too long and the aliens blew up the base in this sector. So, oops. Now, XROAR does emulate the joystick properly, but one of the things about the joystick that it emulates is also the fact that you can't ever properly hit rest. It's actually very difficult and finicky to stop moving. And so every so often I'm going to flip, like every so often playing Starblaze, for example, it just flips me backwards without my input. Which is irritating, but is entirely authentic to the Coco experience. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I'd forgotten that this game gave you ratings at the end. <laughs> you have earned the rating of Garbage Scow. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's that's fine. That's fine. I can live I can live with that. Um I think we'll switch switch away from Starblaze for a little bit. I really like Starblaze, and I'd like to do more of it later, but just one other thing I want to, to, to play before I get to the main event here. Um, something to demonstrate what I'm talking about with the joysticks. The joysticks were irritating. They were super, super irritating. But they did have their uses. And one of their uses... Was a little game I like. That was a little game that I liked called Double Back, which apparently I. Oof, let's see. So the version I have here currently. Let's see here. Der. Code M. Da 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 da. 
One other fun thing about playing games emulated on an old computer is that you're never quite sure what your keyboard is. So in this case, the at symbol is my left square bracket, and the quote is on the two. I guess it's more like an old typewriter than anything else. Let's see here. Ah, ugh. Okay. Okay, this, this will not do. This will not do at all. Shoot. Okay. This is this is bad. So this is this is in my personal opinion, this is the most eye bleedy palette that this that the system has to offer, and I do not wish you to deal with it. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find a, a version that's patched for that's not patched. Okay. Should have one, just have to find it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Extract files. Da -da -da. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, Retrofox. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I'm just demonstrating something. So this is this is double back. This is double back patched for the Coco Three, uh, which basically means there's a lot of explaining that needs to go on. But it's, this is to demonstrate the eye bleed palette. This is my least favorite of all the Coco graphics modes. It has one strength and one strength alone. It doesn't flip red and blue when you hit reset. You're always consistently going to get the same colors, but they're always consistently going to be terrible. So I found another version of Double Back here, and let's hope that this one is actually working properly. Okay. I am being presumptuous that I know what it's actually named. Okay. Load M means load machine language program. Uh, the color computer distinguished between machine language and basic. So let's see here. All right. Please be the right colors. Please be the right colors. Yeah. Okay, that's more like it. So this is running in what's called artifact color mode. Um, the way artifact colors work is, I looked up the technicals at one point, but all you need to do, all you need to know is, on a color TV, particularly an NSTC color TV, um, if you alternate stripes of black and white uh, and send it in its certain frequencies, Instead of getting proper stripes of black and white, you get cyan and orange. And for me, this is the most attractive cocoa palette because you have white and you have black, and then you have two good contrasting colors, which to my eye aren't terribly eye bleedy. And this is double back. Let's find out if I'm in the right color mode. I am not in the right color mode. Hold on. There we go. So one, this is one of, unfortunately, one of the quirks of the Coco was that you never quite knew what state the computer was going to be in. Oh my god, four roller skates off the bat. This is garbage. Um, you never quite knew when the computer booted what state the artifacting color was going to be in. It could be blue, it could be red. Oh, lovely. Uh, so Retrofox, the, the blurriness is actually a function of the emulator to make it look more like it would on a real Coco uh, playing on a television screen. Um, 
I kind of prefer it this way since this is how I this is how I saw my games for the years I played this system as a kid. But you know, your mileage may vary. So what's interesting about Double Back? This is one of the few games I've ever seen that takes complete advantage uh, of the weird ass Radio Shack controller. Like, you can draw your line at pretty much any speed you like. It disappears at the same speed. And how scoring works is, you get something inside a loop, and you get points for it. But if you manage to group moving objects together, like so... Come on. Come on. You know you wanna. Okay. BAM! You get points, you get the uh, total number of points of every object in your loop, uh, multiplied by the number of objects in the loop. So you have a massive risk versus reward thing going on for actually... Ah. You have a risk versus reward for your scoring. And as time goes on, other moving objects get added. Ugh. My least favorites are these bastards. So you have roller skates, which only move left and right. Being limited, they're kind of irritating. The magnets are your the magnets are the best because magnets follow you, but really slowly, so you can group them really easily. Uh, the yo-yos just go up and down, and depending on where they appear on the screen, ah, pairs. Mm. Depending on where the yo-yo appears on the screen, it can be a huge problem. Um, your best bet for dealing with the yo-yos, generally speaking, is to wait until they start going... when they appear in the middle of the screen and start going back up, get them before they get to the top. Because once they get to the top of the screen, they start extending the full length, and then life just becomes unpleasant. Ah! Oh, shoot. Come on. So strategy that might not be immediately obvious is you don't uh, you don't want to go full tilt the whole time because your line or behind you erases at the same rate and we've reached spider level I think spiders are the last destroyable object added before skulls so spiders are basically faster magnets ah! I love that music. But yeah, like this game fully exploits how fully exploits the unique controls. It has an interesting premise and a good risk versus reward balance. This is one of my favorite games on the system. Hashtag Commander Shepard voice. Uh, <clears throat> and it's a completely unique game as far as I know, because I can't really think of anything else that compares. Um, I don't know, kicks maybe? Except you're not claiming territory, you're trying to clear it out? It's strange. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid and really good at this game, and not using a Microsoft joystick, which isn't quite as precise... Ah, come on. Come on. Nope, come on. Stay still. Stay still. Uh, can I? Nope. Okay. Oh, and we've crossed the skull threshold. So at various point levels through the game, new objects get added to the mix that can be added to the screen. And the skulls... The skulls are annoying because... They can't, be they can't be destroyed, and they don't count towards the multiplication in your loop. So they're completely worthless. And the game can generate up to ten of them. I personally have never survived with more than about six on screen at once, so... C'est la vie. When I was really in practice with this game, I used to be able to hide at the very, very bottom of the screen. Oh, nearly touched it. Hmm. 
Yeah, and something else that's not completely obvious right off the bat. The, the collision detection in this is completely perfect. Uh, the only the only section of your line that takes damage that'll kill you is if you hit something with the very, very tip. And you have to be right on a pixel uh, to do it. Which means that there are some other interesting quirks in that, you know, if you line it up right, you can go straight through the stem of a cherry. I will not demonstrate because I am not good at this game anymore. Um, a couple of other quirks is, due to the animation of the spiders being what it is... Oh, good, here's one I can demonstrate with. If you go right down to the very bottom line of the screen, he locks in that frame, and he does he can't actually touch you. So you can just hide at the bottom of the screen and hope more spiders show up to give you more points. Yeah, and when I was really good at this game back in the day, uh, I could hide at the very bottom of the screen, not even moving, and the magnets would come down and just park themselves right over top of my dot. And then if I was very, very, very careful, I only ever pulled it off a few times. Very, very, very careful. You can move up inside the magnet, and it will move up to follow you, and then you can sneak out from underneath it. And, uh, and that was, that would have been, that was advanced strats for getting a really high score, because if, the, if you got a whole bunch of magnets coming right down on top of you, You'd be all set. Okay, so uh, that is my brief introduction to the Color Computer 2. Now, in 1986, uh, Radio Shack decided that it was time to join the 128K revolution uh, at the same time that Commodore did, uh, with results that were somewhat successful. Uh, Commodore came out with the Commodore 128, which is basically the Commodore 64, but with a 128K processor strapped onto it. Sorry, a 128K memory board and a slightly different processor strapped onto it. It had different video graphics modes. Anyway, I'm, this is not about that. Um, it split the market. It didn't do well. The Commodore 64 remained dominant, and the 128 was relegated to the dustbin. Um... Tandy looked at this and said, us too! And they dove in feet first with The Color Computer 3. Now by this time, they dropped, they dropped Radio Shack from the name of it, although being a Tandy, it was still only sold at Radio Shack. And if you're wondering, yes, Tandy does stand for the Tandy Leatherworking Company. Yeah, the same company that makes all the leatherworking materials also made computers in the 80s. And they weren't alone, because Coleco stands for Coleco, for Connecticut Leather Company. But that's another story for another time. So, uh, let us switch over to the Legend of Felda. So the Color Computer 3 had a bunch of stuff going for it. Um, it had a 64 color palette, which was good. Uh, I think it had slightly higher resolution than the co than the original Cocos, um, and it had 128k stock RAM. Uh, ROM, RAM, RAM. I knew these things once upon a time. <sighs> anyway, it was otherwise almost completely compatible with the Coco with the previous generations of Coco. Um, except for like a couple of rarely used semi-graphics modes and the fact that it actually had a proper composite output. Um, or, no, no, I'm screwing that up. I'll screw that up. You could get a special RGB monitor for it. Uh, I had one of them and it was sweet, uh, but the downside with the RGB monitor was um, artifacted colors would no longer work. Like, at all because the resolution on the monitor didn't refresh the same way or didn't catch the came, uh, same signals uh, as your original color computer on a NTSC TV. 
is am I saying that right? NTSC or is it NSTC? I don't even care. Uh, and all of your artifact colors would now show up as black and white stripes. So there were some downsides. So right now we are in VCC 2.01. This is the only. This is the only. Uh, this is the only Coco 3 emulator I currently have. Um, I may look into a different one later because this this emulator has some issues. Um, it's not a huge. It's not going to be a huge deal for Thelda because Thelda is a Coco 3 game. Um, but if I were running Coco 2 games on it, um, that cyan and, and that, that cyan and orange palette um, with the high contrast Hollywood filter, yeah, that's not gonna work in VCC. VCC interprets it as primary red and deep navy blue, and it looks horrible. Uh, but in order to run Coco 3 games, this is what I'm stuck with. XROAR doesn't do Coco 3. And uh, one other limitation with VCC is that it doesn't read the joystick properly, so you are you have no diagonal movement. This isn't a problem for Thelda, since Thelda is four-directional movement, like the original game upon which it's based. Uh, but, oh man, is it ever a problem with other stuff. Uh, Retro Fox. Uh, which game are you asking about, Retro Fox? Uh, Double Back is like 82, I think. Oh. No, not that button. There it is. Okay, so Felda does an auto load thing, which some Coco can, which some Coco programs did. Okay. The whole run could be lost right here. I have to make sure to press Y. Okay. Our colors will not be hideous. We are ready to go. Sundog Systems. Yeah, so the dirty secret of the color computer back in the day uh, is that just about every game for it was an unlicensed knockoff of some other game. Felda was not was by far not the first. And I don't think it was the last. It's one of the most blatant. Um, I would call this the second most blatant Nintendo ripoff in the Coco library. Okay, and that's about all the music you're going to get, because one other th one limitation of the color computer that the Coco 3 kept uh, was that it doesn't really process sound very well. So there's basically no sound except for sound effects. It is possible to do background music and four voice harmonies on the Coco, but it basically can't do anything else at the time you're doing it. Okay. All right. So full disclosure, I am. This is not a completely blind run. Uh, I have. I did watch a video that gets through the first level or so, um, but I am going to be starting from scratch because I've encountered a bug. Yeah, and does this screen look familiar? Because it really should. <laughs> um. I encountered a bug where I beat the boss of the first level at the same time I died, and so the door into the life force room uh, never actually spawned. So this is going to be an adventure in many different ways. Alrighty. Oh, come on, you thing. There we go. So, let me set the scene for you by reading the manual. In an age of monsters and magic, the land of Galaduro existed peacefully within itself and with its neighbors. Trade was plentiful, and the rulers were just and wise. 
In time, the monarchs had a daughter and named her Thelda, princess of the land and heir to the throne. All was good with the world. Some people don't like peace and quiet, as others don't like dogs barking at ghosts in the night. One such person didn't particularly like either, and dealt with the, and dealt with the dogs with a slow death. He had such plans for the peace, too. Okay, so right off the bat, the bad guy doesn't like dogs. I am down with taking this guy out. Uh, his name was Divinax, once wizard of the realm. It's actually spelled with the hyphen there. Once wizard. With an ease that betrays total surprise on the unwitting part of the victim, he stole away with Thelda and secreted her far away from prying eyes. The king and queen were devastated. They called upon their bravest knights and magicians to rescue their daughter. But all were too aware of Divinax's vaunted power. Only a mere squire came forward, but with a spirit and fire that could not be denied. The king allowed this youth to go forward and charged him with finding the six pieces of the life force, the only way to save his daughter. The squire left at once with the promise of Felda's hand as reward. Okay, so we're on a quest to get the MacGuffins so that we can have the bonus chick. Okay, cool, cool. So, in keeping with the off-brand Zelda, uh, the two different areas of the game are referred to as the Overground and the Underground. Bravo. So, there are a bunch of sh things you can get. The sword, the shield, the skeleton key, the ring, etc., etc. Thus far, the only thing I've managed to find is the hammer, but we're going to see how this all goes. All right. Chat, come back, chat. <sighs> and here we go. I really feel like I should put some, some kind of music on in the background, because it's going to be real quiet. And here we are in the land of Galaduro. I, I don't even... Ah, and right off the bat. Okay, so... That's Link, or Lonk, I guess. It actually took me two or three minutes the first time I played this game to realize I actually do have a sword. That's it. That's it, right there. I actually had to check the menu screen to make sure I actually had a sword. Ah. Uh. Link comes to save the day. He going to save the Princess Zelda. Uh, so there's no knockback, and you have to get right up in an enemy's face in order to hit them with your tiny, terrible sword. So the combat is less Legend of Zelda than it is Hide Lied, or, or one of the old Ease games, if you've played those. Come here, come here. Um, I am probably going to die a lot. And once I finish off the first level, I have no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing. So join me on this magical journey. Uh, one thing that's different from The Legend of Zelda is that you actually have a magic meter. I haven't actually found any spells or the crystal ball that the manual tells me will activate said spells, but I am assured that they are there. <laughs> yeah, it kind of lacks the grandeur of the original level one, don't it? Ah, well. Um, and yeah, you might notice I'm not doing a whole lot of grinding or trying to collect things. Well, that's the thing. 
Um, it looks like Zelda. It sure as hell doesn't play like Zelda. If I die and go back to the start of... If I die, I will go back to the starting room of the game, and I will keep any plot items that I have, but I will lose all my bombs, all my keys, and all my coins. And the, the game balance is not what I would call very fair. Oh. I mean, apart from the hitbox problem, one huge problem is that the enemies move way too fast and way too randomly. Which I haven't determined yet if that's a problem with the emulator or if that's just how the game is. Oh boy. Uh, also, unlike Zelda, once you leave a room, it is instantly repopulated. So anything you previously killed is going to be back. Whew, here we go. Ah, get away from me. Okay. Old trolls with canes. Hey, these guys look familiar. Guess what? They die real easy. Uh, you don't have to sing in, you don't have to yell into the second microphone or oh god, I walked straight into one. Yeah. That's going to be the game. Okay, so let me see here. Um, as far as I can tell, this is running at normal speed. The, uh, the, bottom of the, the bottom of the window, which you can't see on your screen, um, tells me which processor I'm using and what megahertz it's running at. So it says I'm doing 60 frames a second at 1.79 megahertz, which is impressive for this many moving objects on the screen on such a slow processor, but yeah, holy cow. Okay, okay, can I at least get the hammer before one of these things randomly walks over me and kills me? Nope. Shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present the Dark Souls of Coco Games. Oh. Hey, come here. What are you doing, chat room? Come back. Where did you go? Ah. Oh, Twitch. Okay, there we are. So, yeah. Um, I'm right back where I started from. Ah, no, not particularly. Okay. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this, and this, and this. Oh, man. One thing that makes me sad about this is, like, I was full on into the Coco when I was a kid. I had a lot of... I took a lot of... I, I took a lot of crap for being the kid who had a computer from Radio Shack. But no regrets. Well, maybe a few regrets. Ah! God damn it, we're going to die again. So yeah, I can... If I just hold in the button, it'll rapid-fire the sword, and I can sort of stagger walk up to an enemy. But that doesn't help a whole lot. <laughs> and they move as randomly as these do. Oh, hey, I got a heart. I didn't even see it drop. Cool. The manual actually recommends that you run away. So, which would be great if it gave you controls that were conducive to running away. It doesn't. 
Oh, also notice my map has reset itself, so that's a thing. Do, 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 do. Okay, didn't walk into him this time. All right. And weep. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of the interesting quality of life stuff from... <laughs> a lot of the interesting quality of life stuff from the real Zelda games just isn't here. Um, so that's the hammer. Apparently it lets you break rocks. Uh, I have yet to encounter a rock. Uh, I've also yet to encounter anywhere I can actually use the bombs, <laughs> that's the bombs, uh, to open a door. The manual promises that you can use them in the underground to open passages, but not in the first stage, apparently. But yeah, this is, this is not, this is not a Nintendo jam. This does not have, this does not have Nintendo game balance or level design. Someone just looked, literally, someone just looked at Zelda and said, I can replicate that on my Coco, and went to town. And the result is the second most blatant ripoff on the entire system. So, here's the thing. Uh, the first time I played this... Well, come back here. The first time I played this, I didn't actually use any of my keys. Uh, I got to this room without using a key, and when I saw that door at the top, I assumed uh, that it was like a regular Zelda room, where you kill all the enemies in the room and then push blocks. No, all that does is make your character spaz out. Instead, you have to use a key. And what do you get? SDS! I think it stands for Sundog Systems. This is what counts as an Easter egg, guys. Drink it in. <laughs> okay, you, you go away. And, okay, good. Good, you guys go over there. All right. So now the trick is to kill this guy without dying myself. Okay. All right. I did it. Hold on. Come on. Oh, okay, hold on a sec. We have one piece of the life force. Oh, and I lifed up too. I didn't even notice that. Okay. So from here on out, folks, completely unexplored territory. Uh, so join me for this magical adventure in way too fast off-brand moblins. Man, this room looks familiar. Uh. I do like how the tech I do like how the the tech tights in this game just sort of retract their legs and become flying saucers. It's and the Octoroks are just evil Cubert. Evil Cubert with a bad cocaine habit. Uh, save states. Um, I'm actually not sure if this game has... The game will save itself. And Oh, wow. There we go. That's some slowdown. Uh, let's see. Config. Da -da -da -da. There is no save states in this emulator. 
Xroar might have one, like, a singular save state. Not in this game. Show this to the old... Oh, hey! See? It, it's not a Thel... It, it's not a Zelda ripoff. See? It's it's a role reversal now. Because you're giving the letter to the old man instead of the old woman. Okie doke. So the, the not P hats can be attacked while they're in midair. Which is good, because I kind of hate them in the original game. Ah! Son of a... Welp! That was a death warp. No, it, it wasn't, but... I wanted to say it anyway. Okay. Oh, I see it's going on in the proud Nintendo tradition of starting you off at only three hearts. Oh, we got bombs right away. That's good. In theory. Ah! How did that miss all of them? What are hitboxes? So yeah. So yeah, funny story. Uh, the color computer was not a, was not a very popular system. It's largely unknown. But it did have, especially on the Coco 3, a few actual licensed arcade ports. Um, or at least, you know, licensed games, like we're on other systems. Okay, well, you're an old woman, so I guess you're not going to take the note. I didn't want to presume genders. Um, come on, move the, uh, move the thing. Okay. So it had an adaptation of Robocop, the Data East game. It had an adaptation of, um, Oh, shoot, I've lost my train of thought. It had an adaptation of Rampage. The adaptation of Rampage was actually pretty good because it was, you know, it was one of the few home ports that actually included Ralph the Wolf. Oh, oh, I'm going to die again. Um, but of all the things that we could have gotten adapted for the Coco, we got Super Pitfall. Super Pitfall came out for only two systems. The Color Computer, and the NES. Oh. No, I have not tried some of your medicine lately. And at those prices, I probably never will. Unless I can start... No, no, no. Ah! Oh. Uh, yeah, the Coco 2 had Puyan. Um, Puy the version of Puyan on the Coco is actually my favorite version, despite the fact that it runs exclusively in eye bleed mode. Um, like, I've played other versions of Puyan, but seriously, the color computer version plays the best out of the bunch. Um, and it has the color computer also has a really good version of Zaxxon, of all things. <sighs> okay, guys. East or west? I'm not having much luck. I'm not having much luck going west. Let's go east. Da, 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 da. Like I oh, okay. So I guess I'm not going east. Ah. Da, 
da, da, da, da. Okay, come on, come on. I want to see what's in that door up there. It's just another old woman who doesn't say anything. Okay, let me. I'm going to check the manual for just a sec. Because this is really. I don't think the manual says anything about old women or anything, but that's it. Uh, you start the game in a vast area known as the Overground. Here you'll find fairies to restore your health. Haven't seen those yet. Graveyard filled with ghosts. Don't touch the tombstones. Uh, and many winding and twisting passages. Occasionally you'll find caves you may go down. This is where you will. This is where you will do most of your game playing. This is programmed in America by someone who spoke English as a first language. Just drink that in. Creatures are numerous, and sometimes you will find it to your advantage just to run rather than attack large groups. There are various terrain types and logical rules stand. You can't walk on water or through rock unless magic is involved. Okay. Nothing about weird old women. Okay. Ah, you, come here. Die, Cubert. Aha! But here, the path to the east opens. See, if this was a proper Zelda game, hitting those walls might actually do something. Come on. Frick's sake. Okay. No, I want to look at more lakes. I know what that lake. I know what that lake is, and I don't want to go there. Ah, you. Okay, we're just uh, we're gonna die again. <laughs> now I do have the hammer now. But the manual says that the hammer is just used for busting rocks, and as far as I can tell, uh, equipping it doesn't really do anything. It, it makes a noise, basically. That's, that's the hammer noise. And yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have a sprite, it doesn't have an animation or anything, so... Yeah, it isn't exactly the same map layout as the NES, which is interesting. Um, there are hints of the original NES layout, like some of the rooms are identical, or as close to it as they could get. Um, but it's not an exact clone. Um, it doesn't mean it's a good clone either, but it's not exact. I have yet to be rewarded for my persistence in bombing walls, but I do think that one in the corner there is suspicious. So if someone gives me a bomb, I'm going to try and explode it. Hey, 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 come here. Cubert. Oh my god, Cubert. Ah. Well, that's a lot of money, Cubert, but it's not a bomb. Come on, come on. What are hitboxes? A miserable pile of secrets. Hey! Well, okay. Thank you. Uh, don't want to go to the water. Come here. Come here. Get over here and die. Ah! Ah! Oh, hey. I think we just found level two. Uh-huh. Well, this is ominous. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> nope, no, 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 no. I just got here. Don't kill me yet. Killed by a refugee from Kid Icarus. Oh my god. Okay. I'm presuming that that's level two. Only because it's the second level I've found. Ah! Come back here. I mean, go away. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Come on. Random ass enemy movement, man. My god. Come on, come on. <clears throat> and whoop. Ha ha. You know what? I'm just going to play a hunch. It's a bad hunch and it'll probably get me killed. But I'm going to play a hunch. Okay. So far, my hunch has failed to pay off. But this kind of resembles an area in the original Legend of Zelda where you can find a fairy. Nope! Oh no. Okay, it's it looks like Lost Woods, it's not Lost Woods. <sighs> A journey into adventure indeed. So things I ponder. I ponder why they decided to call this game Felda. And at first I thought they were just being super cute and pronouncing it with a lisp or something. And then I thought, you know, it's possible that that's some kind of programmer joke. It's just possible that that's a programming joke. Because when you're programming in assembly, or what they called machine language back when I was a kid, one of the instructions you can give is LDA, which I think stands for load A. In other words, load a value into, I, th into the, I think, the A register of the processor. But maybe not? I, ugh, go away. Okay, so... Yeah, this way is the Kid Icarus refugees. Go back to Angel Land. Oh wow, that actually sounded kind of racist. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more of a Hide Live vibe out of this than I am Legend of Zelda. Oh. I'm, I'm tempted to grind for coins just so that I can get the medicine, but I would probably die long before I amassed enough coins to get the medicine. Oh, come on. I mean, just because, like, so far... Oh, hey, I have bomb. Excellent. 
That suspicious looking wall is going to have nothing in it. Yep. The manual specifically says that they only open passages in the underground, so I'm not expecting above ground places to have them, but because it looks like Zelda, I act like it's Zelda. Even though I know very damn well it's not Zelda. No, I am actually hitting a button to, to attack. Believe it or not. Uh, believe it or not. Like, when you see my feet wiggling like that, there's actually a sword attack happening. You can see it a little better from above. But yeah, he has a sword. It just doesn't extend past his hitbox. Okay. Let's die by going up this time. Oh, fuck me running. I'd originally planned to go until 10 o'clock or until I finished level 2, whichever came first. I'm starting to wonder how long my patience is going to last. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if I was if I'm going to if I'm going to hum music for this, I shouldn't be humming Legend of Zelda. I should be doing the the Hydlide theme. But the Hydlide theme is basically a ripoff of Indiana Jones, so I'd get content ID'd. I don't even think I'm going to make it to the level this time. Nope. Come here. <laughs> this game is terrible. <sighs> Let's go down. Like, I have seen good knockoffs published on the Coco. Like, there's a version of Donkey Kong that... Like, there's a version of Donkey Kong that has all four screens, which is something that almost none of the home... of the official home ports had back in the day. But... Oh, yeah, this one is basically the looks and nothing more. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't. So let's let's try. <laughs> okay, so that's another thing that can happen. If you drop a bomb and then walk over it, you will actually pick it back up again. It goes okay. Nope. I haven't yet encountered a room where something happens after you kill the enemies like it does in, you know, the real game, but Hope Springs Eternal. Nope. All right, so that room has officially been wasting my time this whole time. No, no, okay. Go away. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake! Ah! I don't have anything clever to say about that. That just fucking sucks. Oh. Do I have to watch my language on Twitch? I, I forget if the rules are like that now. Thank you. 
honestly, the most time I spend on, on Twitch is usually watching Desert Bus in November, so... And that's probably a worse game than this. Probably? What are hitboxes? Come on. I'm going to explore the forest a little bit. That's where she's been hiding this whole time. Okay. Good. Now, can I get two screens without needing to go back to her? No, apparently not. I think you're right. I think you're right, Retro Fox. This would be fantastic for Cusa Grande. Um, aha! See, now I know from the manual that there is a plank that lets you cross water. And that is a door that I need a plank to cross. So I think I should probably remember that that's there for later. Oh, go away. Ah! Oh my gosh. Come on. I think I'm just going to go back to the ferry. Oh, son of a... They're also inconsistent about how much damage they do. Because I got hit by a Moblin. Moblin. And took, like, no heart damage. And then the next time, after healing up, I took a half a heart of damage. So, I don't even know what the hell. They're not affected by bombs. But apparently they're loaded with hearts. Yeah, you just stay over there, buddy. <laughs> okay. There's the compass. Not tremendously helpful in this game, but it's a thing. Oh man, is that what you, is that what this game has for whiz robes? Oh, that's just sad. I'm starting to think that like most of the rooms in this game don't actually have anything in them and exist solely to waste your time. God. I haven't even found a key yet. Oh, son of a... Well, at least they have to obey walls. That's something. Ah! Spoke too soon! going to get somewhere in level two. This, this is my goal. I have found level two. I shall now conquer it. Or at least maybe find whatever item it's supposed to have.
I'm thinking that it's going to have the candle just because, well, there's one dark room right at the beginning. But considering the collision detection in this game, I don't want to try stumbling around a dark room without a candle. No. Oh, my gosh. You're snorting the cocaine wrong. It's supposed to go up your nose, not out of it. All right. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> In the same position, on the same pixel, my attack doesn't work. Ha! Eric A. Wolf, you might love Zelda, but you hate gamers. Fine, we're going to go into the dark room. If only because these guys are marginally easier to take out and grind off of than anything else in the game. Okay, there's a block. I found a block. <sighs> okay, zoom. Holy crap! There actually was a secret door. Although, given that the keys and locked doors reset themselves in the other dungeon, I strongly suspect that I'll have to keep blowing that door open later if I come back. Nope. Okay. We are cooking with gas and slow down. Oh, you're right. Sequence break! Ooh, 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 ooh. What do I get? What do I get? I got the plank! So one other thing that the manual mentions is that you might find old men in the underground that will teach you spells. And spells are something that Zelda doesn't have. Hmm. Ah! You... Son of a bitch! He just cruised right on and parked on me. So I have the plank now. At least I presume that's the plank. Which means maybe I can start indulging in one of my favorite cheese strats for playing Legend of Zelda. Or not. Oh, come on. Go away. Do I still have the plank? Yeah, I do have the plank. So one of my favorite cheese strats for the original Legend of Zelda is to just park myself on a section of water where the enemies can't get me and stab them repeatedly in the face. I don't think that's going to work in this game, but we can try. Oh, God. Wow. Just... Okay, Vindictive Cubert. 
I am going to steal your sweet meat. You did not drop any sweet meat, damn you. Okay. I was thinking by Legend of Zelda rules, but this is Thelda. Where the plank is an item you have to use, like so. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> um, so yeah, if anyone wants to try to start speedrunning this game, um, I think we just found something that might be exploited for movement techniques, maybe. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say cheese strats, very possible. Oh, hey, it's the old dude. I got a letter from your honey. She wants you to take the blue potion, if you know what I mean. This note is not for me. Away with you. Suck it, old guy! The note's not for you, so you just go postal on the, on the delivery guy. We are leaving you a very bad review on Amazon, buddy. I guess in his defense, I was making an assumption that all old dudes looked alike, but still. <laughs> but to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be fair, you do the same when the mailman brings junk mail. Yeah, that's fair enough, Retro Fox. Okay. So, note, the plank does not work as an attack. But wouldn't it be great if it did? Oh, go up. Ooh. Ooh. Creak. Okay, that, that one was my own fault. Whew, okay. Gotta hurt. We've already gone a fair ways that way. Shit. I was really, really hoping not to see a version of Dark Nuts in this game, but... There they are! How thoughtful of him to corral the first set off in a little box like that, so I know that they're coming. But they can't actually murder me yet. Okay, I would try to cheese strat this with the plank, but honestly, it's not going to do me any good when they're flying enemies around.
Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Two staircases in a dungeon? Okay, uh, I suppose when your game only has six dungeons in it, you have to start throwing the inventory out quicker. Not going to complain. I'll take it. And, oh. Take the spell of Life Restoration to aid you in your quest. Yes, please. Now, here's a question. How do I actually use spells? Okay. Once again, it's time to consult the manual. Da, 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 da. Spells. Medicine of life. Oh, wow. They actually called it the medicine of life. Spells. Oh. So I need to find a crystal ball before I'm able to actually use magic spells. Balls. Oh, they're out of the cage now. And they've been doing just fine. They gotta gotta be down because they want it all. Okay. Okay. We're gonna come back there later. We're gonna come back there later after I find level two. Because goddammit, if I'm going to get continuously humped by the flying eyeballs from Kid Icarus, I want to have enough endurance to enjoy it. You... Okay, so I need to find a candle, apparently. Or some form of fire. Whoop. Whoop. We have found the desert. We have tektites. Are there levers? I don't think there's levers. Suspicious looking wall is suspicious. Nope. Okay, I think this is just south of where level one is. Huh. Hmm. Out of my way. Out of my way, jerk ass. Let's see. Let's go planking. That's what all the kids are into now, right? More magic is good. Actually having the crystal ball would be better. Ah! 
God damn it. Okay. Now, if this were Zelda, there would be places I could go where I could bomb walls or do gambling or something that would really boost my money count right off the bat. And oh my god, he's, he's tough. Yeah, pissed buddy, check out these prices. Great, huh? No. No, not particularly. Ugh. Yep. Thank you. I don't want to stray too far because I want to go back and get that candle, but the chances that I'm actually going to find enough money to do so before getting completely reamed are low. Okay. This would never happen in Legend of Zelda, but this is Zelda. No? Okay. You are a jerk. Okay, this had better be a love letter for you, buddy, because I've gotten tired of carrying it around. No, apparently it's not for him either. So we figured out where the big shield is, and we figured out where the candle is. Which is something, at least. You're no help. Like, the way those two screens come together make it look like there should be a way to go south there, but no. Okay. Ah. Yep. Yep, it's probably time I started actually making a map. I also need to find a good place to grind for money, but there's no such thing in this game, because there's no place I can go where the enemies aren't going to just completely gangbang me, right? <sighs> It's a long bloody lake. Aha. Now oh, that lacks the grandeur of the Zelda fanfare. Oh, ooh, 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 yes. 
Yes, please. Come on. The cursor doesn't like doesn't seem to like moving very much. It's very particular about it. Okay, that's going to be a big help. No, come on. The plank is also picky as hell. I haven't found any bombs yet, so I can't waste my time on those walls yet. Oh my gosh. Go away. Come on. Just one heart, guys. Come on. No? Gonna be that way, huh? Okay. Creek. Huh. No, no, go away. Ha ha! Hmm. Okay. Is it for you? gonna make one final stab at level three now that we've done a whole bunch of exploring and gotten a bit more life energy and then I think we're gonna call it a night Oh my gosh. Uh, I probably will. I probably will stream again soon, Retro Fox. I don't know how soon. Um, I'm coming up on kind of a big trip soon, but before that happens, I definitely want to do some more of this. Oh my gosh, come on. Ah! Nope. Those guys are probably best just avoided entirely. Oh, I don't have any bombs. I can't actually get into the secret entrance. I'm going to go back and get some more health. because that's marginally less time than having to walk back here from the beginning of the game. Hmm. 
Now, hmm. I the hitbox is on the sword. I just I don't even. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> One more try. Like, I haven't actually gone looking, but I presume there's no FAQs for this game online. Like, it's obscure enough that I didn't know it existed until about two days ago. And I was one of the people who actually followed the color computer scene back in the day. So, I mean, what chance does anyone outside of that scene have of knowing this even exists? I do find it kind of interesting, though, that it's way easier to find all of this other stuff than it is to find level two. That, that seems like a strange oversight in the game design. Okay, so kind of line up with their head and s stab them in the neck. Seems to be the general strategy there. Yep. You can just barely make out the layout of the room when you do the transition. Just make me dead. It's really getting close to 10 o'clock, and I have no real faith that I'm going to end up beating this game game beating this level oh my gosh beating this whole game I can't even imagine um, I just want to make one honest attempt to eat to just just to see the boss I need to get a bomb, otherwise I can't get anywhere in that dungeon. There's the bomb. Okay. Eight bombs. Generous. I do kind of enjoy how it's the same weird swallow sound effect for every item you pick up. Yeah, it probably gets a little easier, like, once I actually have the magic ball. 
because, like, at the very least, then I'll be able to cast a life restore spell in the middle of the dungeon. And if I could figure out why those old guys aren't giving me the shields, that would be even better. Um, if it were an actual Zelda game, I would pres I'd assume that it had something to do with the number of hearts I have. Like in the original Legend of Zelda, you can only get the white sword after you have five hearts. But, like, that's Zelda thinking. And Zelda thinking doesn't necessarily hold here. Well, this is as good a time as any to try with the cheese strat. I know in Zelda the enemies can't walk on your stepladder. I don't know if that's true of this game. Yep, they can use my they can use it. They can use my plank. I do like how it just teleports to my position. Ease was like that. Yeah. Oh. I spent a bit of time with uh, the first Ease game on the Sega Master System a couple of years ago. I don't think I finished it. But, yeah, I vaguely remember the vampire being a giant pain. And as previously noted, this game has a lot of similarities to Ease, especially in the combat system. Although, I think in Ease it works a bit better than this. Like, enemy facing and stuff actually matters. And they put some thought into how the hitboxes work. This, not so much. Oh, if it was the Turbo CD version, then it might not even have been Ease. The Turbo CD version had uh, book two and three on the same disc, as far as I remember. Like, the parts of Ease that I remember most are, like, wandering around the opening area, where you have to, like, touch a certain tree to get a certain item, which was very high light of them. Uh, I remember the second town, and the mines, and the castle. I don't remember specifics about bosses, though. Well, that's where I got the flute. Where the hell is the boss? I don't have time to play all night, Felda. <sighs> all right. And that's about it for tonight. I got work in the morning. I should probably go try to sleep and bleed off some of the rage from this playthrough. But, uh... Oh, yeah. 
written by Eric A. Wolf, which is the least creative furry name I think I've ever heard. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for coming out. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. This was my first attempt at this. Uh, I think next time I may have to actually play some music or something in the background because talking over this thing constantly do, 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 kind of makes my throat sore. Um, but yeah, I'll probably do this again. I'm going to hard reset on this thing so that I don't have to sit through that fanfare again. Boop. And yeah. Um, let's see. Let's do something. Let's do something silly. Mm. That's not my equal sign. There's my equal sign. No, eight. something ridiculous, 255. This probably won't work. And if it does, um, if this does what I think it's going to do, it should be fine. But if it goes, if it doesn't work, eh. If it does work, good. If worst case scenario, mild seizure warning. Okay. Yep. And that is a very simple basic program for changing the screen color. Except not really, because as soon as you exit out of the program, it goes back to black on green. Welcome to the color computer, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Oh, I never set that up. You saw nothing. <laughs> Good night.